Hi, it's Angie, and welcome back to Midlife Magic and Mayhem. When you get to be our age, the health of your brain becomes a little more noticeable. <laughs> Looking for your deodorant in the refrigerator, walking out of one room to get something, and when you get to the next room where the thing is supposed to be, you can't remember what it was you came into that room for. Just me? Probably not. Well, today's conversation is with Allison Liu, a brain health coach and expert in helping women reclaim their mental sharpness and improve their energy and mood. That's a really good deal if I say so myself. Allison herself struggled with brain fog and panic attacks in her early 50s. Forgetting what she was saying in the middle of saying it, finding it hard to express herself and feeling increasingly irritable, she felt that she was losing her sense of self. Adopting a science-based approach, which she uses with her clients today, she increased her own brain reserve, improving her memory, mood, and relationships. She now coaches women in their 40s and beyond to achieve the same so that they can handle life's challenges with ease, face the future with confidence, and fully engage in life at work and at home. Her mission, staying sharp for life. Allison goes over the 11 risk factors for keeping our brains healthy, and she gives us the top three pillars to focus on for cultivating healthy brain function. And one of the most surprising things that we discussed, cognitive decline begins way earlier than any of us is imagined, and research is now proving this, decades before it actually starts showing symptoms, which is a little bit frightening. <laughs> So even though we can't see the physical manifestations of our brain health, like we can see our muscles when we work them out, this is actually one of the most important areas to focus on in our aging process because it has an impact on every system in the body. And also stay tuned because Allison gives us a generous offer at the end, so don't miss it. Please enjoy this conversation with me and Allison Liu. Hi, Allison. Welcome to the show. Oh, hi, Angie. Thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here on Midlife Magic and Mayhem. And I'm so excited about this topic about brain health. It is so mm. important. And it's it, it's just crucial to living our, our most thriving and vibrant lives as we as we get into this aging process. So I would love to know what got you here. Tell us a bit about your story. And first of all, where in the world are you? Like, mm. where are you located and what do you see? <laughs> yeah. So, um, Angie, I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity um, to join you on this podcast and just to say hello to all your listeners as well. Um, I am based in the UK, in the beautiful West Sussex in the south of the UK. Yeah. Beautiful. Never been there. Maybe one day I'll get to England. Uh, and then a, a bit about your story and kind of what got hmm. you to where you are now. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I'm kind of, I'm really passionate about healthy brain aging, which to be honest was something I had never really thought about before when I was younger. Um, we hear a lot of ways to look after our joints or our heart or our skin, uh, but we don't learn so much about how to look after our brain. And so my personal journey really started only about 10 years ago. Um, I was going through the perimenopause um, and maybe this might resonate with quite a few of your listeners. Um, I started to notice some changes in my own mental health that really unnerved me. Um, I started making impulsive decisions uh, that were at times worryingly dangerous. And afterwards, I'd be really shaken up and think, how can I ever stop myself from making such impulsive decisions like that again? 
And I was becoming increasingly anxious and irritable, which was really unlike me. I'm, I'm normally very positive and energetic and quite a gentle person, but I was starting to have panic attacks and I would lose my temper over really petty, small things. Um, my husband obviously started to notice all these changes as well. Um, and he didn't know how to help me. Um, I was worried uh, about what people would think um, at work, especially um, because there were times when I would forget what I was saying literally right in the middle of saying it. And I would struggle at times to put my thoughts together or to express myself. Um, at times I'd have no recollection of certain meetings that had happened or decisions that had been made. And I was honestly worried that my capability would start to be questioned. It's a horrible feeling. I was, uh, I'm a manager and I have been really capable and was being paid to deliver results and manage relationships. And there I was struggling to perform in my job. And it honestly felt like I was losing my sense of self, like I didn't recognize myself in how I was behaving. And I wasn't able to control any of what I was experiencing either. Uh, it wasn't as though I could tell myself not to make impulsive decisions or to remember what I couldn't recall. And I, I think that was why it was so frightening. It felt like I couldn't control what was happening to me. And around that time, I started to be interested in natural ways to heal our body and look after our health. And I had been on medications earlier in my life and they had had side effects that really weren't great. So I started to learn various things that I could do and my knowledge and understanding really started to, uh, to grow from there. So I would experiment with things to see would they make me better or make me worse? <laughs> um, I was experiencing uh, migraines at the time uh, really quite uh, frequently. And again, I, I hadn't had migraines uh, earlier in my life. Um, but what happened really was amazing. Uh, after a little while, um, I'd look in my mirror and think, oh, goodness, my skin looks brighter. And uh, and my digestion started to improve. Um, it has always been really sluggish uh, all of my life, but it was so much better. And then the brain fog started to lift. And I can't tell you how amazing it was to just be able to think more clearly again. And so over time, my mood started to improve and the panic attack stopped. I haven't had a panic attack now in years. Um, and I'm back to solving problems really quickly and adding real value at work. Um, I am genuinely happier. You know, I get days like anybody uh, where my mood can go a bit low, but generally I, I kind of feel like I'm back to being myself again. Um, and, you know, that's really affected my relationships as, uh, that are closest to me, especially, I think, with my husband. And I uh, now know that living in a way that supports my body to function well is key to feeling great um, and to improving our memory and to thinking clearly. So I then wanted a, a, a way really of being able to share that with uh, other women and be able to help them on a similar journey. Um, so I trained as a health coach. Um, and it really gives me the opportunity to kind of inspire and empower and equip women on their personal journey to better health and well-being. And um, I then further uh, qualified as a brain health coach in particular. Um, I'm so passionate uh, about our, our brain, um, as I say, because it really is everything about who we are. It's how we think, how we feel, uh, how we act in situations or react. It's our ability to learn and remember. Uh, so it's it really is in essence who we are. And so when our brain isn't functioning very well, that's when we start to see 
um, things like memory loss and low mood and anxiety, those, those um, symptoms coming up that kind of really are a little bit of a warning sign that says, hey, you know, my, my brain's not functioning very well. Um, and, you know, so I really, I want to help women to understand one, just how amazing their brain is and two, just all the various things that they can do to look after it. And, you know, in a sense, it's, it's helping women to right now in, in midlife kind of be able to have uh, the best life that they, they can um, and not be struggling uh, with, um, with all these other things like anxiety and, and low mood and brain fog, things that make life really difficult. Um, so I would say it's arguably the most valuable asset we own. And uh, so therefore, yeah, looking at ways to look after it Absolutely. So I, I work with women uh, primarily in their 40s and beyond. And that's because um, as we go through the menopause, I'll, I can talk about something called uh, brain reserve. But as we go through the menopause, that reserve naturally goes down. And it's why how we earlier in life, uh, we can be fine. And then we suddenly go through the menopause and it's just like, you know, can, kind of enter into this crazy um, stage. And it's like that, that reserve has gone a bit low. And what we need to do is everything that we can to, to bring it back up again. Um, yeah, to protect our brain for the future as well. Mm, so good. And it's interesting because I find, you know, there's a just a plethora of information out there about how to keep our physical bodies from the neck down, healthy, strong, all the ways to uh, keep those pieces and parts going well into, you know, studies on longevity and all these different things and workouts and fitness and nutrition and all of that for the neck down. And I love this, uh, this new movement towards brain health and what it's, what it's really doing. And because we are living longer, longevity is a big piece and an important uh, topic for humanity at this point. If we are going to be living longer and hopefully healthier longer, what does that mean for the world? Yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, it's a big, it's a big question and it would be in all of our best interest if we're all thinking clearly as we're, <laughs> as we are aging. So I'm curious if you'd be willing to share, like you mentioned impulsivity as one of the symptoms we'll say of your, in your own story about noticing what was happening. Can you share an example of something that would, that you would include in that impulsive nature? Yeah. Um, there was one that kind of, chills me really even now um uh, i would hasten to add that uh, a situation like this then hasn't happened since uh, i have brought up that brain reserve again that i was talking about and and i'm no longer in this in this space now um but i was driving home from work one day and uh there was just a short stretch going over a bridge that had like two lanes and i was in in, in the UK, I'm, I was in the left-hand lane, so um, I'm on the, the slow, it's not a fast and slow lane, but you know what I mean. I'm, I'm, uh, anyhow, so I'm in, I'm in the left lane and there's a queue ahead of me and I'm kind of thinking, oh my goodness, I mean, that's like a really bad queue. If I get stuck at this stage going home, I'm like, it's going to be hours to get home. And I immediately pulled over to turn, turn right, but it was so impulsive that I didn't properly look what I was doing. And I didn't, I mean, to this day, it's, it's a minor miracle that I didn't hit anything or anybody, but it really shook me up because I, it's exactly like I said, I thought to myself, how do I make myself never ever do that again because that was dangerous driving and um, it really unnerved me um, in a way that 
uh, it was just a real indication of where my brain was at at that time. Um, yeah, so that was the yeah. that was one of the instances that happened. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that had to have been terrifying. Like I can feel that when you said it really shook you up. Yeah, like that's really that I can feel that. Yeah. yeah. Did you know at the time that? wow, I, I really need to start diving into brain health. I mean, was did that come up for you? Or were you just like, oh my gosh, what's happening? I need to change something. Yes, that was it. It's like, I have, I have no idea what's happening. I have no idea where that came from or, or uh, yeah, but it was part of the, the mix of things that I was going through um, at the time. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of like, no, I have to do something. Um, yeah. But I had no idea mm -hmm. at that time what that could be. Mm -hmm. So what was the transition? I mean, you, you say we've had some some pretty big events happening. What what was the start? Like what had you say, you know, kind of put your foot down, these things are happening. Where did you start on this path? Yeah. <clears throat> so like I say, I was doing lots of research. Uh, I was uh, looking and reading articles uh, online. I was, um, I had bought a lot of books. Um, <clears throat> again, I think I was predominantly looking again at, at brain health. Um, I was struggling with migraines, like I say, and there's nothing quite focuses your attention than pain. Um, and so True. I was kind of just looking at whatever I could could do as well there um, to, to try to manage the migraines because the medications um, I really struggled with, um, they, they just yeah made me feel awful. Um, and so I just wanted to find alternative ways of doing things. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And what I can remember, <clears throat> there was this one Easter and I had been reading and, you know, this is this is my journey. And, you know, when I work with people, I don't necessarily assume that this is going to be their journey. But for, for me, <clears throat> I um, I had been reading about doing an elimination diet um, to see whether it would help with anything. And I remember it so well because it, it was just at the time when Lent was starting. And I thought, well, what I could do <clears throat> is give up some eating some things for the six weeks of Lent and I'll just see. I'll see what happens. And I found it so hard to make that decision. It was kind of like, but I don't want to stop eating all my favorite foods like pizza and you know i just honestly i really struggled with the decision but i'm like i felt everything was was so bad at that time i was like well really i, I really will try anything to give this a go and it was about uh, a couple of weeks or so into doing that that uh, like i say i noticed that that my skin was changing and my digestion and literally the brain fog started to lift and by the end of those six weeks i'm like wow do you know i feel so i feel so much better i haven't i hadn't by then got rid of everything but it was like a real step change for me and uh, and i was like wow <clears throat> i'm i'm not going to go back <laughs> you know i love those things but actually if they made me feel as as you know contributing to feeling as bad as i was then um actually it's, it's not worth it. I, I want to carry on. And, uh, and then all the various other things that I was doing as well alongside that really started my journey of healing. Yeah. So, so all the things that you, you know, the favorite foods, pizza, and I love pizza too, all those things yes. <laughs> before, like, so we'll call it like the before times. So before mm -hmm. this transition period, perimenopause, menopause, uh, those, those food items that, that food in your life didn't seem to make a difference or it didn't, nothing was coming up around it. Like it, there was nothing that occurred to you mm. like, oh, I should stop eating pizza for a while or, or just any sort of elimination diet. Like everything was fine or was yeah, it? Like I say, my digestion had been sluggish, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would never have, would never have thought 
that any of those foods would have been affecting me. And it was interesting because it got to the, so that happened in Lent and then I carried on not eating those foods. And then in the summer, we took a, a journey by road and it, it kind of takes um, a couple of days to do. And um, on the journey, I just wasn't eating enough. And so I thought, well, do you know, I, I love German bread. <laughs> it was in Germany. And, and I was like, I'm, you know, I'm going to eat some bread. So I, I did that then for a few days, just a little bit. And, you know, some of my symptoms started to come back. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this is just incredible. I would never have thought that that those symptoms were anything to do with with what I was eating. Um, and so, yeah, uh, again, every now and then I might try just something and just see if I'm OK with it now. And, you know, at the time as well, it wasn't just my brain. Actually, I was getting multiple joint pain um, going going through that period as well. So both shoulders, elbows, wrists. And um, so it was all the hallmarks of like rheumatoid arthritis. I was I was. Um, my joints were, were not good, but you know, um, when I'm when I'm not eating those foods, I'm fine. I don't have joint pain at all, N not not even the slightest hint. Um, but if I if I go onto those foods and just try them out for a little while, they all start coming back again. And so Absolutely. then I know, yeah, that's it's not for me. Hmm. So what are those foods? And I know this is different for everyone. It but is. just to, it, it is. is, I've done elimination diets myself. I'm also, I'm also certified as an Institute, Institute for Integrative Nutrition Coach, IIN. So okay. about 10 years yeah. ago. So we have that in common. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious though, what are the foods that worked for you to cut mm -hmm. out that helped with this process? Yeah. So <clears throat> I had, um, I had read somewhere and somebody had referred to them as like the Trojan Four <laughs> and uh, there was gluten, dairy, corn and soy. And, um, and so I was like, so for that particular elimination diet, and this was, it was, it was tough, um, but, you know, I just needed to figure out what, what else to eat, um, especially for breakfast actually was the hardest one. Um, but for that period, I actually took out all, all of those four plus grains just for that six weeks um, and then reintroduced some things back again. So uh, grains and pulses I've reintroduced and I'm fine. Um, but generally speaking, still don't have gluten, dairy, corn and soy. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. And it's interesting to see how, just how much and how deeply what we eat affects everything, every yeah. single system in the body and including our brain health. Yes. I'm curious with the, with the brain health certification, I did not even know that there was such a thing. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. So when you're working with people, obviously there's a nutrition component. Are there other components that you include in this, uh, this whole domain of brain health? Yes, definitely. So <clears throat> there are 11 risk factors, things that can harm our brain and lead to those, uh, that lowered brain reserve that I was, I was talking about. Uh, maybe it might be helpful for me to just give you an analogy that that helps to understand uh, what I'm referring to. So um, uh, basically, if you can imagine the brain being like a computer and the physical functioning of the brain is like the hardware. So that's the, the organ that is the brain and mental health, in a sense, is like the software that runs on it. And when we see mental health issues, it's like the software isn't running optimally. Um, but what we fail to realize sometimes is there can be an issue with the hardware. And uh, to illustrate that, I, I use this analogy. If you can imagine uh, brain reserve being like a tank of fuel and the more fuel you have in the tank, the less vulnerable you are to running out. And so you can go on a long journey, uh, not need to worry that you need to take a detour. Um, however, if you're low on fuel and that, that 
gauge goes into that red zone, then you're more vulnerable should something unexpected happen. And it's the same with brain reserve. The more active you are as you age, uh, the more brain reserve you have, then the more resilient you'll be and the better able to handle life stresses. And uh, mental health and memory issues, like I said, are just an indication that that brain reserve has got, gone a bit low, it's gone below a certain line. Um, and that's what I mentioned when we go through the, the menopause, that that brain reserve naturally goes down because we've got the changes in hormones. So <clears throat> then when you think about the brain as in hardware, <laughs> um, there are these risk factors that can, can very much impact on, on how it functions. So we use a mnemonic, um, bright minds uh, is helpful for remembering all the, the various 11 factors. So the first one is B, stands for blood flow. Um, blood flow, the, the brain uh, is a very energy hungry organ. Uh, it's only about 2% of the body's weight, but it takes about 20% of the body's oxygen and uh, blood flow and 20 to 25 to 30 percent of the body's glucose. So it's it's really, really energy hungry. And so we need to make sure that we've got great blood flow uh, to support it. Um, so R is for retirement and aging. So that's things like keeping mentally active. So your brain is like a muscle and you really need to work it, um, use it or lose it. Um, and, and so you have to really reinforce those good pathways in the brain, uh, continue to learn new things as we get older. Uh, retirement, you'll notice that people's, people's cognitive function can go down super, super quickly. One, if they stop moving, but two, if they stop learning and getting just those new experiences that keep their brain active. So that's our I is for inflammation. So again, we know about inflammation like chronic inflammatory illnesses. So like I was talking about rheumatoid arthritis or Crohn's disease, um, you know, there, there are several of them, but what people might not realize is actually that chronic inflammation is, is also affecting our brain. Um, and that's why sometimes it's quite common for, for people alongside their uh, what's it called, autoimmune condition, um, may well have like that brain fog because the brain is struggling. Um, all right, G uh, is for genetics. Uh, and, you know, genes, uh, I'm sure you've heard this before, you know, genes can load the gun, um, but actually it's our lifestyle and environment that can pull the trigger. And so if we want to protect our brain, getting older, especially for somebody who has uh, a family history of Alzheimer's or dementia, need to be super intentional. Um, but through what they do, they can um, prevent themselves from going down that route uh, in, a, in a lot of instances. Um, again, doing things that protect their brain. Um, yeah, yeah can prevent or slow down the onset of dementia. Uh, head trauma uh, is a big one. Um, <clears throat> so <clears throat> um, obviously, the <clears throat> excuse me, um, the brain is very soft. It's kind of the consistency of soft butter. And, um, but it's housed in a really hard skull with some razor sharp edges bony edges. And so when we have a head impact um, or an accident, the brain is also floating actually inside the skull in cerebrospinal fluid. And so what happens in an accident is that the brain moves inside the skull. And it's that, it's that movement that can cause the damage um, and can damage blood vessels and lead to scarring. Um, and uh, that can really impact on future memory problems. So T is for toxins. <laughs> is this okay? <laughs> there are, there yes. are 11 of them. 
<laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think, and people can dive deeper into, into each of these, I'm sure with you, yeah. but, but I think it's yeah. great to give an overall view of all the different risk factors for sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, so T is for toxins. Um, and again, you know, since the industrial revolution, about 80,000 chemicals have been introduced into our environment and our bodies have to cope with detoxing what they're getting exposed to on a daily basis. I can just use as an example, it's estimated that a woman can put up to 500 chemicals on her skin every day. And I was just like, you know, how is that possible? But, you know, if we could think about it right now, if I was to ask you, what products do you think the average woman could put on her skin in a day? Oh, I mean, you could start with hand soap, hand lotion, shampoo, conditioner, face wash, face moisturizer, face toner, another moisturizer, an oil, 12 different kinds of makeup. I mean, deodorant, mm -hmm. fingernail polish, mm -hmm. like fingernail polish remover. Like, I mean, yeah. it, the list is so extensive. It boggles the mind, actually, if we really stop to think about it. Yeah, exactly. And because we don't know that, that these things, our bodies then, our bodies have to, to detox because everything that goes on your skin goes into your body. And that's just through the skin. So, you know, taking things that we inhale, so, you know, um, car fumes and stuff like that, um, or smoke, um, and uh, things that we ingest as well. Um, so, you know, pesticides uh, from foods, uh, all different kinds of things. And so how can we support our bodies in, in uh, detoxing? How can we reduce that load uh, on, on our bodies? And um, yeah, in, in a way that's still enjoyable, um, but, you know, it's just looking after our bodies in the best way that we can. So it's T for toxins. Uh, M is for mental health. And that's because actually our mental health uh, can be really potent on our body. You know, our mind affects our body as much as our body affects our mind. And um, so, yeah, we would look at, um, look at ways of managing um, uh, mental health things like, you know, rotating negative thoughts or, um, yeah, mental health conditions. So like, you know, focus and uh, attention, all of those kinds of things. Um, I is for uh, immunity and infections, um, you know, because infections can again have a, a really powerful impact on the brain. You take COVID-19 and long COVID, you know, actually how people really struggling with, with brain fog. Um, and that's because uh, viruses can have uh, really such a big impact on the brain. Um, so looking at ways to kind of really protect your immune system and look after it, make sure that it's going to function as optimally as it can. Uh, N is for neurohormones. So, uh, you know, hundreds of hormones in our body, but there are, there are a certain number of hormones that have um, a real direct impact on brain health. And so looking at each one of those and making sure, again, that they're uh, optimal uh, in order to help the brain function. Um, D, diabetes and obesity, um, because actually um, uh, how, how, how our weight is, and the kinds of foods that we're eating that trigger um, uh, insulin um, to be released in the body has this kind of cascade of effects. And, um, and it is really damaging on the brain. And so looking at ways to kind of get our weight um, uh, into a good range, um, and uh, looking at, again, how we can eat in a way that supports our bodies um, in the best way possible. And, you know, again, that's linked as well with, you know, um, how we manage stress and all of those kinds of things. Because often, you know, when we're a bit low or we're a bit stressed, we might, food can be one of those things that we turn to. So it's looking at all of that. And then finally, sleep, uh, because sleep, again, is super, super important. Um, I'm not sure that uh, if you're aware, but but when we're asleep, 
our brain literally gets a wash. And uh, in getting a wash, it, it takes away uh, all of the toxins and cellular debris that have built up during the day, kind of get washed away. And it, it helps our brain to, to function. Um, so, but it only happens when we're asleep. And so when we're not getting really good quality sleep and long enough, then, you know, those, those things then start to, to build up in a way that we don't want them to. Um, so like amyloid as a protein, um, kind of it's, it's good to get that, that washed out, anything that, that's excess. Um, and if it doesn't, it then starts to build up. So, yeah, those then are, are the, the things that uh, we would, I would encourage women to uh, just to take a look at and make small changes that can put them on a better path um, than where they might be right now. Absolutely. What would be the top three things that you could give our listeners right now? What would be your top three takeaways that someone can start to make these small adjustments to their health overall that would make the biggest impact for their brain health, that they could possibly see some major differences? Yeah. Well, I think... To be honest, I think um, it, there are the, the things that we can do. So things like, you know, move more, uh, prioritize your sleep um, and, you know, eat in a way that supports your body, gives your brain the nutrients that it needs. I would say that those are, are super, super basic uh, ways to, to um put yourself on, on really quite a good path. But I would say as well that at this time of our lives, um, it's, it's really important to kind of get a baseline of where we're at in terms of our cognitive function and then to, to track progress with that uh, in every subsequent year. And the, the reason for that is that because it, it's easy to kind of dismiss the things that we notice, we don't like them. You know, there's, there's so much um, stigma around mental health and memory loss issues, isn't it? And, um, and so just um, if people can, can get, if women can get that, that um, baseline in terms of where they're at, and then start taking very intentional steps towards improving the function of their brain and then retest. It kind of gives them the, the reassurance they can see that they're making progress. Um, and as well, it kind of, if there are any signs that they really need to um, be aware of, you know, it's good to catch things early on. Um, and most people, again, probably wouldn't be aware that actually dementia and cognitive decline starts in the brain decades before a diagnosis. You know, we often think, you know, uh, people that almost catch dementia. It, it's, <laughs> it's not like that. You don't go from, from suddenly not having dementia to having dementia. It's, it's a very slow, very gradual decline in cognitive function. And so the earlier you can stop that decline, the better. Um, and yeah, so, so doing a cognitive function test, I, I would say is really important. Uh, you can get them online. Um, uh, I use, uh, I've used Cognifit, uh, it's really quite a fun one <laughs> and it's free. And then uh, you can take the assessment, you get a, a score and then you can have access to some exercises um, that uh, help to, to build certain uh, areas of your brain. So that's very good. One thing yeah, I I'll, definitely recommend. Yeah, I'll link. So it was Cognifit, and I'll link that in the show yeah. notes. Great. Yeah, there are that's others. Wonderful. So another one that I use is um, my Brain Fit Life, um, but you have to you have to register um, and pay before you can access that one. Um, but they, they test the brain in slightly different ways, um, but both of them are really good and they both have then the exercises that you can do 
how to improve your brain. Uh, on the on the Cognifit one, I'm already uh, only in a few short months. I'm already like a hundred points better than I was, um, and that's out of eight hundred. So you know, to make a hundred point difference in a, in a few months, I kind of feel <laughs> that's really quite encouraging. You know, um, that's amazing. So, yeah. Well, and I think too, part of the issue can be like you just mentioned that dementia and cognitive brain function decline starts way earlier than any of us is even thinking about because we're busy, we have our lives, we're, you know, we're not thinking about these things. And then it's, it's one of those things that it slowly happens overnight type thing. It's like all of a sudden we start to see these changes when they've been happening for a long time. So that requires being interested in making changes when we really, when we really don't know that anything is yes. happening in there because we can't see inside of our brain. So we just have yes. to trust like, okay, I'm going to do these things now and it's going to make it better 10, 20 years from now, 30 years from now. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and that can be hard because we don't like to change what we are doing. <laughs> right. I it's, know. Yeah. It's when we, so when we true. don't see a result immediately, that's what I'm saying. Like we have all these programs for health and fitness and, weightlifting mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, because you can see physical changes, but with the brain, you can't, you might feel yes. them. Like, you know, yeah. you, you had physical feelings of like, Oh, wait a minute, this is much better. So I love mm -hmm. this conversation. I think it's so important in people, all of us, um, to have this information and really trust that these changes, getting good sleep, moving our bodies, feeding ourselves well, makes mm -hmm. a big difference, not only Huge. in our physical bodies, but in our brain functioning. Yes. Yes. I think a lot of people think that there is nothing that they can do about advancing brain aging. And that is just so not true. There is so much that we can do. And, um, uh, yeah, I love as well what you were saying about, you know, it can be really hard to make changes. I think most of us <laughs> wish that when it when it comes to changes like this, we could be like a Harrier jump jet, you know, <laughs> and just kind of catapult ourselves from our current reality to a new reality, you know, and yeah. um, but it, it just doesn't work like that. And for change to be lasting, we have to kind of rewire our brain. Um, but the brain loves things the way they are because it, remember it's really energy hungry and so the harder it has to work the more energy it needs so it's kind of like no I like these nice paths that I've I've currently got where I don't have to think about things they're just automatic so it likes autopilot and so in order to form new habits we have to be super intentional until the brain gets used to those new habits and then it's kind of like okay now these I'm I'm happy with now and so our approach actually needs to be a little bit more like a jumbo jet taking off you know and you know how they have that throttle initially just to get that plane moving and then it goes along the runway doesn't it and it goes on and on and on and you just kind of think it's going to run out of runway you know and then it eventually it takes off and you know it's it it's that kind of thing it takes it takes a bit longer um on the the slower uh, uh wave to, in order to rewire the brain but that's actually the only way that we're going to make these good habits stick um and, you know so many people they can try quick fixes on all it does is they just go back to the same old habits uh, afterwards. And the problem with that is that then people can um, feel stuck. And after a while, they just lose hope that actually they can make any changes anyway. And they decide this is now my new norm um, and I'm just gonna have to get used to it. And then they live life less than what it could be. And, you know, the really important thing is that when we have people in our corner who believe in us, who walk with us through the process, it can give us that courage uh, to take action, but also to keep going and to, um, you know, when we have a little setback, it's like, okay, you know, we, we have another go again, we just keep going. And eventually the brain will. 
uh, adopt those new habits. And so, you know, I would encourage people to seek the support of a coach or a personal trainer just to help them make progress. It really can make all the difference. Absolutely. Having someone, because we can't see ourselves. It's having someone outside of us to give us that reflection back and to keep us accountable and to just be a partner, yeah. to, to walk with us on the path, right? Mm -hmm. It just makes it, um, it makes it more fulfilling. And those yes. changes that we're talking about are more likely to last yes. because we, exactly. we tend to think we can do everything on our own. Oh, I've got it. I can do this by myself. And we can, we are strong, capable humans that can do a lot of things on our own, mm -hmm. but not everything. We're not supposed to be doing mm -hmm. everything by ourselves. Yeah. We are supposed yeah. to have help. That's we are yeah. pack animals really. <laughs> so yeah, we exactly. do better when we're, we do better with, with support. So I agree yeah, completely. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm working with, um, uh, a group at, at the moment and it's just so lovely to to uh, we have like a, a chat space uh, where, where people can share things and I, I share to the group and sometimes they'll get a, a little conversation going between them and they're kind of like oh you know I've I've tried this and I gave it a go and and oh do you know I feel so much better I you know I, I don't have this kind of brain fog in the afternoon anymore and and you know when people share what they're doing and their journey it's so motivating to kind of like oh okay I'll, I'll give that a go too you know and you don't feel like so alone uh going through the process um it, it really can make all the difference absolutely totally agree mm -hmm. well Allison thank you so much for being on the show and for this wonderful education about brain health again it's so important I'm so excited to put this out into the world and we can support each other in that process. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I'm just grateful that you're doing the work that you're doing and how can people find you? Yeah. Um, so uh, one of the things, Angie, that I was thinking was how can I um, add kind of some real value here for your listeners because what I've what I really want to do is make sure that if there's somebody there who really wants to optimize their brain health uh, if what I've been talking about resonates with them uh, I would like them to have the opportunity to have um, a free coaching session with me so I would like to offer um, three free coaching sessions um, and for, uh, I'm going to give a, a code, um, and, uh, what we will do is I want to make sure that they have a coaching session that really helps them to be clear on where they're at now and what is the outcome that they want for themselves. And so if, um, they can go onto my website, it's alisonliucoaching.com slash call. And then when they're booking, booking the call, if they just enter this code MMM23, so Midlife Magic, uh, Midlife Magic Mayhem, <laughs> MMM23, um, uh, then they'll be able to, to book that call with me um, for free. Um, and, you know, if I've, if I've run out of slots, um, then uh, I'm, I'm afraid that's what it is. But I, you know, I really want your listeners to understand that they're not stuck with the brain they have if they are struggling in those ways. Uh, they can make it better. We're never too young or too old to start. And it would just be such a privilege to support them on that journey. Um, so yeah, feel free to book a call with me. I would love to connect with you. That is beautiful. Thank you so much for that generous offer. And I will put all of that in the show notes so that it's super clear what people need to do with your website and the code and all of that. So all of that will be in the show notes for everyone. And I highly encourage, as soon as you listen to this, go click on that link and book a free call with Allison to get more support for your brain health. Thank you again. It's been an honor and pleasure having you on the show. Oh, Angie, really, it has been such a pleasure for me too. Thank you so much. You're providing an amazing resource with this podcast. And I love what you're doing in empowering women to live their life in the fullest in midlife and beyond. Uh, so I'm going to share 
uh, your podcast with my network and thank you so much for the opportunity wonderful thank you hope to see you soon take care As always, thank you so much for listening to the show, and I hope you take Allison up on her generous offer. And please subscribe to the show and leave a five-star review on Apple or Spotify or wherever you listen to your shows. And you can also watch us on my YouTube channel if you want to see these conversations. Please share with your friends. This will help the show gain momentum and our other sisters and women out there who want to bring some magic and mayhem into their lives as well.